This is the test program for the mapping software of a robot I'm building. The robot will be shaped like a Roomba but bigger. For the purposes of this software, the important parts of that design are that it will use two independent wheels to move and use a connect to see. The connect will give it a lot of depth data to work with, but this software models the connect's data as 15 depth values with a 60 degree spread. On the left is the box 2D scene that the robot is sitting in, and on the right is the robot's mental map of its surroundings. The mapping software basically draws a pixelated map of the scene. It draws lines that it knows are passable along every depth measurement, shown as blue, and places a dot of impassable terrain at the end. The impassable terrain has two components, indicated by the yellow and red parts. The yellow is the actual depth measurement and indicates that there's a wall, and the red is a radius around the wall that matches the size of the robot. Red cells are impassable because the robot knows that it can't get that close to the wall. Red cells are used mainly so that the robot can tell whether or not it can fit through a gap. The robot's target is the mouse. It uses the A star search algorithm to get there. This algorithm generates that white line. All the lag is inside the video recording software. The mapping program runs smoothly. Here you can see that the robot's actual path is cutting the corner. This is because it vectorizes the path before following it. Here it's stopped because the destination is inside the impassable area. This is showing the vectorized path instead of the pixel path. The path vectorization algorithm is pretty dumb and I probably need to change it. It starts at the robot's end of the pixel path and follows it until the line of sight to the first pixel is blocked by red or yellow cells. It places a waypoint and then continues checking for line of sight to this waypoint. There's also some tolerance for line of sight through red cells because otherwise it sometimes doesn't smooth the path enough but there's a balance to be found for this tolerance. Right now the tolerance is too high so you can see that the robot scrapes along the wall. Here you can see how it updates the path as more of the map is explored. Now I've placed the target inside the wall so it tries to get there by exploring more. I've made the map more complicated to see if I can confuse the robot. It heads towards the target, finds that the way is blocked, and tries to go around the other way. You can see how the robot doesn't try to go through gaps that are too small. This is showing the area searched by the A star algorithm. The nice thing about this algorithm is that the search tends towards the target, and as soon as you find it, you found the fastest route and you can stop. Because of the corner cutting vectorization, the result may not be optimal in theory, but I've never actually noticed this problem in practice. There are lots of limitations to the current algorithm. It's a first attempt, so I made a lot of simplifications to the situation. I plan to add these complications in one by one, modifying the AI at each stage to deal with them. I always had the final algorithm in mind when designing the basic system, though. 
This is why blue lines are drawn, even though the basic algorithm doesn't actually need them, and why the map dims over time. The main simplification is that the robot is given its position and orientation exactly, so that it can easily slot the new depth data into the map. The real robot won't have this information. Later on I'm going to use a common filter to guess the position based on the wheel velocities, and then adjust the guess based on how the depth data slots into the existing map. The algorithm to do this uses the blue lines. Another problem in the real world is moving objects, but I already have plans to deal with this. The dimming of the map will allow the final algorithm to update old sections of the map if objects move. Also, if a new blue line crosses an old yellow dot, the robot will know something's moved, which is another reason for the blue lines. Also, quantization noise is a problem with this map. The red blobs of pixels can't perfectly replicate the circular robot shape. So depending on the radius used, the robot can either underestimate or overestimate its ability to fit through a gap. My plan to deal with this is to have the robot consistently underestimate its own size, and then if it stops unexpectedly as, as it's going through, it will know that it's in fact too big and mark the area on its map as impassable. Another possibility is by drawing anti-alias lines, dots, and blobs, rather than the hard edges I'm currently using. The real robot will have to contend with noise and undefined regions in the depth data, as well as calibration errors in the Kalman filter, and cats.